I recently had a letter from Energex to say that they're coming over to change the meter. And then it's not something I have a choice. They just came and did it. And then after that, AGL sent me a letter to say that um, your tariff will now be changing and you will now have a, a demand charge put onto your put onto your bill. So, so recently I also looked at a bill from um, someone in Cairns with a postcode of 4868 and they've got demand charge on their bill since January this year. So this is a bill for 146 days and by looking at this bill it actually makes sense to actually install battery you know even something like a Tesla Powerwall because it really substantially reduced the payback time and I'll explain why so if you have a look here if you look at this bill here this bill is made up of daily charges uh, obviously that we can't change 82 cents per day and then there's a peak usage rate so this is the actual rate that you use for that period 1880 kilowatt then there's a whole heap of demand charge here in summer is a lot higher at 297 and non-summer is 44 cents then there's a solar feeding tariff um, of 7.86 cent per kilowatt uh, this is what you basically is a credit so if you have a look here this is this is a a very good use case for a power wall so if you have a look, 1880 kilowatt from a grid for 146 days gives an average of 12.88 kilowatt per day. Now the power wall holds 13.5 kilowatt hour and it will hold sufficient charge overnight without drawing anything from a grid. So if the, the battery get topped up fully before sunset, it has enough to last overnight now the solar export is 3406 kilowatt for 146 days or ever or average of 23 kilowatt per day so we've got a lot of excess uh, solar export so even on a cloudy day the system should produce sufficient to charge a battery fully before sunset you know, unless it's really raining for a few days but even cloudy days even rainy day this system should produce quite a lot of solar so with a battery the, the export obviously would drop to 1525 kilowatt which is the original 3406 minus what you're going to consume or basically you're going to get a credit of $120 $119 instead of this $267 so okay, the daily charge for 146 days is $120.45. So essentially the bill will be the new bill will be 50 cents instead of $987.98 for that 146 days, giving a saving of $987. And if you divide that by 146 multiplied by 365. It's two thousand four hundred and sixty-eight dollars per year. So a five-year saving of twelve thousand three hundred and forty-three dollars, or a six-year saving of fourteen thousand eight hundred and twelve dollars. So if the power wall costs fifteen thousand dollars, it's you know it, it will continue to go up. You know I remember when I was buying at twelve thousand dollars, but you know with inflation everything is going up. Uh, and with a saving of 2468 per annum, that is a 16.46% per annum return. Now, that is a very good return. You know, basically, you can pay back in about six years. It's getting to the realm of a return for solar panel. You know, because battery used to cost, used to take 10 years or more to get your money back, which and often make doesn't make a lot of economic sense but now because of this demand um, this demand charge that is you know slowly creeping into our electric system um, the payback time for battery you know is substantially reduced 
So currently a 24 to 33 months fixed term deposit at CBI is getting 1.45% per annum. So that is more, so investing in your own battery is more than 10x your return. So obviously there's added benefit in time of grid outage, you know, in Cairns, for example, they have a lot of cyclone. I mean, even in Brisbane, where I live, there's a lot of trees. Every time there's storms, you know, there's always power blackout. You know, I, I actually look at the history of my, uh, my outage report uh, on the Tesla app. We had about 30 events so far and the longest was six hours. And this year we had one that lasted for two hours. How is this demand charge been calculated? So the way it's worked out is it takes the peak usage per half an hour time frame between 4 p.m. and 9 p.m. each day in kilowatt. Then multiply that by two to work out the hourly peak. So this is the hourly peak demand that you're drawing from the grid. So the total demand charge is the hourly peak multiplied by the number of days in the month for, for that particular month, multiplied by the demand charge rate. And the demand charge rate for that postcode for summer was $2.97 per kilowatt, and which is December to January. And the demand charge for non-summer is $0.44, cents, which is every other month. So let's give an example. On a hot summer day on 15 of January for example so 4 to 5 p.m. Yeah, we're running just the normal fridge and your other electric uh, appliances around the house drawing 0.5 kilowatt the rest of the time is also 0.5 but then we come home at 6 o'clock and for a particular half an hour period you know we decided to cook on the stove uh, you know, had the kettle going, you know, but it's because it's very hot, we turn the aircon on. I mean, this is not a ducted aircon, this is like a, a split aircon for the living area. And all of a sudden, we used two and a half kilowatt for that half an hour period. So, the way they calculate that and multiply that by two, that hour, the peak draw is five kilowatt. And then after that, uh, we stop cooking seven or eight, you know, back down to 0.8 because the lights are on now, 0 0.8, uh, eight to nine. Sorry, that's a mistake here, eight to nine, 0.8 kilowatt. So the total demand charge for the month of January is the hourly peak times the number of days times demand charge. So it's five kilowatt times 31 days in, in January, multiplied by 2.97. That demand charge $460.35 for that month. And this is on top of the, the usage rate. I remember we saw the usage rate here is that um, 14.3 cents. So we still got to pay that 14.3 cents per kilowatt that we use, as well as this $460 just for the month of January. So that's how ridiculous the price can get. And obviously, if you have ducted aircon, I mean, this thing can ramp up to six kilowatt an hour, uh, just aircon alone. So you you'll be you know you could go over that easily, you know, to eight nine kilowatt. It actually makes a lot of sense now to get battery, you know, from a, a, a numbers point of view. Yeah. As, as you can see here, the uh, the return now is you know you can get. 16.46 percent and this is based on today energy price and and this bill was um was issued last financial year so every financial year generally in june july august um there is an increase so and it generally goes up uh, all this rate generally goes up so you know the payback time can actually drop you know as the tariff increases. So I hope you find this useful. Thank you very much.